So why then is David considered a man after God's own heart? I believe it's because he was willing to repent, to say he was sorry to God and to others, to Bathsheba and to the nation, that he sought to get closer to God with all of his heart, mind, and soul. And he was willing to repent and change because he'd sinned. And he sought God's forgiveness and will. We have to be willing to change, to repent, to say we're sorry, really sorry from the depths of our soul in order to change. We have to be intent on it. We have to be willing and we have to act upon it. We have to cry out with sorrow, but we also have to work on ways to change. We have to meditate on them, change our thinking, change our actions. And it doesn't come easy. Some of our character flaws are so deeply and rooted in who we are and what we do that we have to learn new ways. And we have to take the time to repent over a considerable amount of time to change. And then we need examples of how we should do it differently. If you struggle with anger, you have to learn ways to stop your brain from reacting in anger. You have to learn how to respond, not with anger, but with peace and love and grace. It's not easy. And so David was willing to repent and change whenever he sinned and when God confronted him. And as David was willing to repent and change whenever he sinned and seek God's forgiveness and mercy, it was David's cold and broken hallelujah that connected him to God again and again. So what is it that you struggle with? What sin do you struggle with? What emotion do you struggle with? Is it sadness? Is it self-pity? Is it anger? unrighteous anger that is how has it separated from your loved ones how has it separated you from God's love and we're not talking that God judges you and in a way that you're disconnected from God God's love and grace and presence is always there but we sin and it creates a separation from us hearing from God and how he is guiding us so I am broken, you are broken, we are broken people. We need to cry out to the Lord with our broken hallelujahs. And let us consider Job. He too was a righteous man before God, and he thought he did everything right. But he did not sin like David. He may have even been guilty of some kind of sin for his suffering, but we don't know what that sin was exactly. Maybe not. We do have that his friends came to him and tried to point out what it possibly could have been that he'd done wrong, how he had sinned. But we don't get to the truth of it. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he was someone who was blessed by God, and then God allowed him to be tested. And at first, Job tried his best to accept the good and the bad from God, that it all came from the Lord, and he was dealing with it the best that he could, but he didn't know what the sin was exactly. And he was dealing with it and considering all that he had lost. And then it says that Satan afflicted him with horrible diseases within his body, mind, and spirit. And most of us have had to endure various forms of suffering and disease in our own lives, and that the longer we suffer, the harder it is for us to accept and deal with it. And we go through these stages of suffering, and we go through the whole spectrum of emotions and spiritual struggle. I mean, it's one thing to deal with physical aches and pains and decline and it's another thing to deal with the roller coaster of emotions that come along with it or sometimes that come along with just things that we endure that affect our minds and our spirits we may all go through the stages of grief 